What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 12th financial charting tutorial within Python and Matplotlib. Uh, where we left off, I'll just bring up uh, an example of the chart that we've got. Um, we left off with the chart uh, basically like this. So fundamentally, I mean, this chart is pretty much done as far as candlestick and volume chart is concerned. I mean, we've got all the necessities that we need. Now, before we start taking our chart to the next level with like moving averages um, or like MACD and all that kind of stuff, um, a little known tactic to making extra money is to make your chart badass, right? So if you're doing Forex, you're going to get a few extra pips if your chart looks just really cool, right? And if you're investing, you're going to make just a little bit more money uh, if your chart looks good. So it's really just imperative that we make this chart look badass. So what I'd like to do is we're going to change, I think what we'll do is we'll move off of bars down here and make it, you'll see, it'll be pretty cool. And then we're just going to change some colors around a bit. Mostly I just want to show you guys all of the options that are available to you guys and show you like how you would change them if you wanted to. Obviously we'll be doing it in the video so you can follow along and see, but you know, you might want to do something else entirely, you know, you might want to change your own colors. And uh, so I'll show you guys exactly how to do that, and then we'll end up changing this chart. And honestly, the one that we're going to change into is probably going to be pretty awesome looking, so I can't imagine why you'd want to do anything other than what I show you. But I'm going to teach you guys how to do it. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and hop in. So uh, a few of the things that, like, really we're not going to change anything um, up here. We don't need more imports or anything like that. So go ahead and scroll down, and basically all of our edits for like the next for this entire chart are going to kind of like pap in between here you know like the, everything's going to be uh, within these few lines um, so let's see the first thing that we want to do is figure um, probably the first step to making anything badass is blacking it out right if you want to make your car badass you black it out right you darken everything that you can so that's what we're going to uh, start doing but um, one of the things to keep in mind is, at least with like graphs, if you literally turn everything black, it kind of looks weird. You kind you don't want to do like just like a pitch black. You kind of want to do like an offset black in some some form or fashion. So um, the first thing we want to do is change the figure, uh, the figure's face color. And as we do this, I'll show you guys the change as we go on, just so you understand. But this is like kind of like the background color. And uh, so to do that, you just do face color, and then parentheses. You could do like you could, if you just wanted black. Um, I think B would give you black, but you could also type out black if you wanted to do black. But what we're going to do is a hex color code, and it's going to be zero seven zero 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 D. So we'll save that. We'll run that real quick, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So the literally the background now. On the video, I don't really know how good a quality uh, you'll see. I mean, all the videos are rendered in high definition, but it's kind of like a dark, a really, really dark purplish blue. Um, but yeah, it's shit. Like, you might look at it and think immediately it's black, but it looks better than black, trust me. So whenever you use black, it, I don't know, it's just, it's like too black. I don't know. Anyway, um, continuing on. So that's the face color, right? So the absolute background of your plot. And just as a side note, when you go to save, um, it isn't going to save this face color. Later on, we're going to have to edit down here um, and make it like save with that proper face color. So just keep that in mind if you decide to skip my tutorial or something. Um, so now what we want to do is actually do like you saw, like the background of the actual chart was unchanged. So now we want to change that. So the way that we're going to do that is say axis, um, oops, axis. BG for axis background, and here you can again put in any hex code that you want. And for this, um, we're going to do basically, I think we'll just do the same number um, as we did for the figure. So you'll see in a second how we'll actually, um, so we'll just, let's just copy and paste this in here. So we'll save that, we'll run that, and now it does look kind of fun. Oh my goodness, Windows Shake. You're going to be the death of me. Anyway, um, obviously this one's still white, and it's looking a little funny. We can't see our labels, but don't worry, we'll get to those in a second. Um, so that's looking good. So now we've got to um, move on to uh, the candlestick. Actually, let's change the axis background of um, 
the volume or this uh, the second axis too. So let's do that. So I added that in there. So now when we run it, you should see that the background is you know, totally. We can barely see our bars, but if you like zoomed in, you would see. You know, there's our bars. Um, okay, so now color up and color down. Since we have such a dark background, we can kind of get away with like a, a really light version of green and, and red. So for that, I'm going to use this hex code 9EFF15. And then for color down red, uh, we're going to use pound FF1717. So now we'll see where we stand at the moment. So now you can see that they've kind of like lit up a little bit, right? It's a lighter red and it's a lighter green. So they really stand out with our background. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is, as you'll notice, we can't see our grid, right? So you can actually change the color of the grid. So true, we want the grid. And then for this, let's just make it white, like just a white grid. Um, and after that, now what we want to do, I'll show you guys everything together, I think, after we do this. So come down here. And let's begin changing a lot of our other stuff. So first of all, we want ax one dot y axis dot label set underscore um, color, and we want to make this white as well. So this will make the actual like labels white, um, and we don't really need to do the x axis uh, because we've actually removed the x axis on this first one. Uh, so there's no reason to really change that. Now what we want to do is ax1.spines, and as far as I know, there's no way to like just change all of the spines at once. <clears throat> um, actually, well, I mean, I would venture to guess that there is a way to do it, but I don't know it. So we're going to do each one. So you just do an empty brackets for now, because so we're going to copy and paste this. And then do set underscore color, and then in the uh, color, we're going to use pound five, oops, pound five nine nine eight f f. That'll be the color that we're going to set for all the spines, kind of like a light blue. Um, so then we'll do four of these because there's four uh, spines. And here we're going to do bottom, and then we'll do top. Then we're going to do left, and then we'll do right and let's just go ahead and um, we're gonna copy this uh, yeah we'll just copy this to the other one as well for AX2 <clears throat> so just come down to AX2 right after the grid paste um, we could you could change the AX2 grid as well to show because like right now it says true I'm actually going to say AX2 grid false because um, I don't really like it on the volume chart. It's not as essential to like see it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, let's let's run it and see where we stand at the moment. So pull it over. So as you can see now, we can see this label. The edge of the chart is all kind of blue or like that light blue that I was talking about. And we have the grid on the price. Um, well, at least the candlestick. So starting to look better, and now what do we want to do? Let's see. Uh, we probably want to do the tick parameters because we haven't really done that yet for AX1. Again, we don't have to do the X tick parameters because there are none. We got rid of them. So AX1 dot tick underscore params, and then in the parentheses there, we're gonna, you have to specify the axis. And in this case, we're going to do the y-axis, comma, and then the colors that we want to do, in this case, we want to do in white. So let's see where we stand now. So you can start to see, like, our numbers and all that kind of stuff. So improvement. We are always improving. Now we're going to get to the real deal. And we're going to kind of change up the volume. Like, right now we're doing bars with the volume. And there's kind of a, another way. I mean, you could stick with the bars if you really like the bars. But I vote that we do something else. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to actually make a fill. And so, like, you know, it's got a line, and then it's filled below the line, right? So the way that you do this is you're going to first need to know what the minimum value is, right, to do a fill. And later on, maybe I'll show you guys some cool things that you can do with fill. But for now, we'll just do a basic one. So first, we're going to specify a variable that tells the fill, like, how low to fill to, right? So to do that... Uh, we're going to say volume min equals volume dot min. And all this is, is we're going to use this to tell the filler how low to fill to, basically. So um, let's see. 
So for AX2, instead of plotting a bar, just change it straight up to plot. And it's going to plot date and volume. It's going to plot like a date and volume line. So once, once we've done that, let me show you what it looks like. So now it's like just like a straight up line, right? But we want to fill this. And then we're also going to change that line color. So where are we? Date volume. And what we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to change the color, first of all. And we'll do pound 00FFE8. And oops, did I? Yeah. Uh, zero zero not o o. Anyway, um, and then the line width. Um, we'll just do like a point eight. So it's just going to be like the tip of our fill. You'll see what I mean in a second. So now what we want to do is come down, and now we want to do the filler. So to do a filler, just ax two dot fill underscore between. And what do we want to fill between? Well, we want to fill between dates and volume in and then act the actual volume right so you're kind of specifying a shape and that is our shape and then we want to fill everything in between that shape and then we're going to say uh, the color because this is we're basically we're making a shape so it has a face color right and that color we're just going to use the same color as up here and then to kind of add a little bit of an effect to it we're going to say alpha this is kind of like the shade and alpha is going to be 0.5. So now that we've done all that, let's draw it up so you can see where we stand. So um, so now you can see that it's kind of like it's like a filled in, but even though we use the same color, since this has a low alpha, it's kind of like faded a, a little bit. I don't know. I just kind of like it. You could say alpha 1, right, or no alpha parameter in it. You wouldn't have that, but I like it. So anyway, that's how you do a fill. And like I say, you can do all kinds of things with fill, really. Um, that's just an example. So continuing on, oops, didn't close it. Uh, the next thing that we want to do, uh, we need to specify the tick parameters for AX2. So let's just copy this right here, and we'll paste down twice. So we're gonna. This one actually does have two. So paste, paste, and we want to have X and Y, and then change this to AX2. So save that. We'll run that, see where we stand. So now we got, you know, we can see our date here. We got stock price, we're missing volume, so we need to add that in. So close out of this. And volume here, what we're going to do is just do comma color equals uh, W. We're going to have to do the same thing for the title. Um, we could have date. I'm just kind of like not. Well, you we can just get rid of date. I don't really think you need to call that date, right? People are going to recognize that that's the date. Um, oops, comma, color equals W for the uh, super title there. And let's see. Let me see where we are at the moment. What else we need to change? So now, you you know, we see volume. We didn't need date. And really, the only changes that I think we need to make are, like, now that we're not showing date here, um, we could show it, right? Like we could go, um, well, I think I deleted it. Yeah. And you would just do color W if you really want date there, but I don't really want it. So we're not going to have that. And so bottom instead of 18, probably do 14 for that, those extra characters. And then the top, we're going to move that up just a little bit. And, uh, we don't need this anymore. That was for debugging. So let's save that, we'll run it. And okay, so this is our chart now. And so as you can see, it's kind of aligned pretty darn good. Now, there's only one last thing that we need to do. And if you, um, when you close this, you remember that we're saving it to example.png. So if we looked at example.png, you see it's like something is wrong, right? It's got this white background. And the save figure just automatically gives you this like white background. Because if you'll remember, like normally it was like, when we would display it, it was a grayish background. Then we saved it, it was like a lovely white, and it was working out. But with our new chart, that's not really working out. So what we need to do is use a uh, function down here. And so when we save it, now what we want to do is just say face color. And then you could either just say the face color, or you can just use a uh, quick little thing here, get face color. That way, if you do decide to change your face color ever, 
it just automatically changes it here. Like you don't have to like do it in both places because it's kind of counterintuitive. I'm not really sure why that does it that way. But now, if you run it, you know we've got it. Okay, cool. We close it and we open up our figure. Let me make it small enough so it's on the screen at least. You'll see that. Okay, now our figure actually uh, looks like we intend it to, right? And um, so yeah. That, uh, I think, is going to conclude this tutorial. I'm not really sure what else I'd want to do. I mean, obviously, um, you know, it's still a pretty interactive chart. We can do whatever we want. You know, you can zoom in in various spots, and, you know, everything's following. So, um, so that's going to conclude the kind of customization of your chart. I mean, like I was saying before, you can change everything as far as colors and... Um, display or concern you can change the fonts even if you want I just kind of like the fonts uh, you could add more dates less dates you can change those so that's pretty much going to cover all of like the organization and kind of like customization of the chart so hopefully you guys have learned something hopefully you can kind of make your chart look however the heck you want to make your chart uh, look and um, as always thanks for watching thank you for your support your subscriptions and uh, until next time